In this lesson, we'll be talking about function notation. It goes on the back of your 2-1 notes. Function notation is really kind of a fancy way of doing substitution that you've done in previous years. Um, you'll notice that at the top of this, we have three different functions that I have in different colors. The f of x function, which is in red, g of x, which is in green, and h of x in blue. The one thing you're going to want to notice is that our, we we are in function notation, so we sometimes will say that when we see f of x, it's like saying y equals here, and that's kind of what we want to um, go with, but the f of x being there tells us that this indeed is a function. So if I were to graph these equations here, they would pass the vertical line test. That's what it's, when they're putting it in the notation f of x or g of x, they are saying g is a function of x. So x would be the independent variable, g would be the dependent. We're not going to worry a lot about the notation today because we're just going to practice substituting. But I wanted to point that out because we will be talking about that quite a bit later. So now as I'm looking at this, it's, I, my first question says find f of negative 2. Now this was f of x. So if they're asking me to find f of negative 2, they want me to substitute negative 2 wherever I see an x. So I'm going to use this equation right here because they told me to do the f one. If it said g of negative 2, I'd be using this equation. So to find f of negative 2, which is how I would say that, wherever there is an x in this top equation here, I'm going to replace that with a negative 2. So where the x, it says x cubed, so I'm going to write negative 2 cubed, and then everything else gets copied the exact same. So the minus 3, I write minus 3. Notice, again, from one equation to the next. So when you're looking from what I have right here to what is written in red here, the only thing I changed is where you would see an x. It is now replaced with a negative 2. So again, it's kind of like fancy substituting. I'm substituting the negative 2 for the x. After this moment now, I'm going to leave the notation. So this f of negative 2 notation sticks with me. I'm not getting rid of that. That's what they asked me to find. So I'm telling them f of negative 2 equals. And then from here I'm just going to simplify using my order of operations. So I know that I would do exponents first using PEMDAS. So negative 2 cubed is really negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. When I take negative 8 minus 3, I would have negative 11. So f of negative 2 equals negative 11. To kind of put this into perspective a little bit, we're actually just finding an ordered pair on a graph. That's what we have found. So we are saying that when, when we graph this line right here, and to, we're going to do that in class. That'll be an activity we do in class. But when I graph that, I shouldn't say line, excuse me, when I graph that function, if I were looking for an ordered pair, one of the ordered pairs that is on this function is the ordered pair negative 2, negative 11. That's one of them. That's what that's telling me. So we could find any ordered pair on that function. And there's infinite many, right? Think of how that line would look. There are infinite numbers of ordered pairs. So that's what we really are finding here. So even though this, I think, think sometimes when you see it written like this, the f of negative 2 equals negative 11, doesn't make sense what we're actually doing. We have just found a specific point on that graph. So if we were in story problems or a word problem, we'd be looking for, hey, what happens when it's 2? What do we do then? Or when it's negative 2? And they're telling us this is the output. This is what happens. So we input the negative 2. The output's negative 11. Again, though, for this purpose, we're kind of just substituting. So there's the first one. Number 2, then, I'm going to have you um, pause this quick and just try it real fast. See if you can do g of 6. Otherwise, fast forward if you think you're good. And then I'll do it with you. So number 2 they say find g of 6. So I know I'm going to use the g of x equation. That, that using the variable g tells me to use the equation that has g in it. So again, the x equals 6 in this problem. So I have to use the same notation. I'm keeping this in the equation. I'm not going to just write the expression. So I'm not going to write just this part. I have to keep the full equation. g of 6 equals. And I'm going to copy what was in green up here, the exact same, except wherever there's an x, I'm going to write a 6. So take a look at that for a second and notice nothing changed from my green to my purple except everywhere there was an x, I put a 6. So I am just substituting. From here now, 
I need to use my order of operations to simplify. So my g of 6 stays the same. Again, that's labeling what they're asking us to find. Using my order of operations, I know that I would do exponents first. So I would have 3 times 36 here, minus 18, minus 2. When I actually take 3 times 36, I'd get 108, minus 20. So g of 6 equals 88. So now, again, my ordered pair would be 688. And you have to picture um, the green equation here is actually a parabola. So we can envision what that looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. And so one of the ordered pairs in that parabola is 688. The next one, now in 1 and 2, we were substituting just a constant put a number in there, we actually got an answer that we can think about, we can see. When I got my answer of 88 to number 2, 88 makes sense to me. I know what that number represents. If I think of it in terms of cents, if I think of it in terms of feet, we can picture in our minds what that 88 is. Now as we're looking at number 3, we're going to be finding it in terms of another variable, which means our answer isn't going to be something I can think of in my head. I'm going to get an answer like 4b. 4b doesn't mean anything to me unless I know what b is and that's a lot of algebra. So once we'd substitute in what B is, we could think of that and I can actually have a concrete understanding of what that number looks like. So when we're doing it in terms of another variable, we won't have that. So for number three, what they're asking me to do is take the 2B and replace that with my X. So I'm going to substitute in there. So I'm finding F of 2B and from red to purple, every time I see an X, I would replace that with a 2B. So I'm going to write 2B cubed minus 3. What's really important here is the fact that I kept my 2b in parentheses. That's what was replacing the x. So I needed to put those parentheses in there so that I realize at this point when I simplify next, the cubed goes to the constant or the coefficient and it goes to the variable both places. So some, a lot of students will answer that this next step is 2b cubed and hopefully now that you see this arrow here, you'll realize why that would be incorrect. I actually have to cube the 2. So when I do that, I would write f of 2b equals, and I have to actually take 2 times 2 times 2. So I would get 8b cubed, and then I'm going to bring down this minus 3. At this point, then, I ask myself, can I actually take 8b cubed minus 3? Hopefully, your answer would be no, because these are not like terms, so I can't subtract them. So my final answer is right there. And again, like I said at the beginning of this problem, if I tell you something is 8b cubed minus 3, that doesn't make a lot of sense to us. I can't picture how many feet that would be, how much sense that is, because I don't know what b equals. So our answers are a little more abstract when we have them in terms of another variable. We're going to skip four. That one we'll do in class. Number five, then, in your notes, you'll see now we have a fraction here. So it says find g of y over four. There's a couple ways that you could look at this. Um, you know, you can put the one in front here, or you could rewrite this as one-fourth y. That's another way that would look. However you like to see it or you like to represent it, if they, it has the same value, that's fine. So you can write it any way you'd like. I'm going to leave it for now, just how it is written. And you'll see that we're using the g equation again, so to the green. I'm going to copy everything the exact same, except where the x is. I will put y over 4. So once you write that down, take a second to look at that and notice from green to purple, nothing changed except the x's. I replaced each x with y over 4. After that now is when I do my order of operations and I simplify this equation. So I'd have g of y over 4 equals, and again I do my squaring first. Now if you don't remember, when you square a fraction, you square the top and you square the bottom. So this would really be 3 times y squared over 16. That's how that would look. And then minus, again, now another little reminder is when we multiply fractions, so this is really 3 over 1 times y over 4, so we multiply across the top and across the bottom. 
So I would actually have 3y over 4 and then minus 2. Now I have one more step. I have to multiply again another fraction here. This is 3 over 1. So as I write this, this is my last, well, I think my last step. I guess we'll have to decide that. I would have 3y squared because I'm multiplying across the top and across the bottom over 16 minus 3y over 4 minus 2. Now I look and say, are these, they're like terms that I can add. I can't add anything or subtract anything here because they're not like terms. I have a y squared, I have a y, I have a negative minus 2. So none of those are like terms and I can't do anything with them. This might look strange to you. I think we're not used to seeing a problem written like this. Just so you know, that answer and this one are the same. So if I would have written this as 3 sixteenths y squared minus 3 fourths y minus 2, I think this is how you are used to seeing it, but I want this to be interchangeable. I want you to realize that these two answers are the exact same equation. They're the exact same value. They make the exact same graph. They are both parabolas. And if we aren't quite remembering what a parabola looks like, there's a general outline of a parabola. This one does happen to go up. They both graph a parabola. So I don't care which way you write this. You want to write it like this? Great. You want to write it like this? Great. I will. I don't think one is better than the other. It is whichever one you are more comfortable with. And then you'll see that you also have a number six. You may try that one if you want. Same with number four. Go ahead and try those for tomorrow if you'd like. But if you're confused or need more help, we are going through those tomorrow. And I think six might give you a little bit of problems. Um, just try to remember your rules for how you divide and multiply fractions.